young, especially if you're kind of like, well, we could do anything. Well, yeah, you, you can do anything in this day and age, but if you start showing yourself restrictions and being like, okay, what could I do with just these parameters and this and that, and, th- and you like start to box yourself in, you start to get more creative in my mind because there's less yeah. things to think about. And then, yeah. yeah, maybe we'll get something outside of the box, but you know, we're really focused on like this is the core of what we're dealing with. How can we make this amazing? And so that when people listen to this, it's like, oh my god, like this is awesome. I love what you just said. I'm just like thinking, like you know, when you have less options, like you know, when you restrict yourself, you have less options, and you just have to be more decisive. And like, it's just like direct planning like okay this is our course of action you're just kind of like okay this is how we're gonna do it and then you just jump right into it and that's also more inspiring it's less just like meandering and decide oh what am i gonna do i don't know exactly i mean if you think about it whether or not i'm a giant fan of ricard strauss and his tome poems those are probably the greatest example of going on a journey and telling a story through that kind of thing you know, the idea of, you know, Till Eulenspiegel or Don Juan, and you start to get these pictures in your mind of what's going on. And there's no words. I mean, yeah, we know the stories, but there's no words. And yet we're able to go on this ridiculous journey over 15 to 20 to 25 minutes. And why can we not do that in something that's simple? And we can. We just have to figure out how we can frame that picture and get everything in. Love it. Would you say that you're primarily a bass player? Is that was it, would you say that's your main instrument or do you think of yourself more as like a multi-instrumentalist? I think of myself as a multi-instrumentalist, but in a certain way it's kind of jack of all trade, master of none when it comes to yeah. <laughs> that. Mostly just because, you know, I I spend most of my time recording and producing and, you know, yes, I'll play on tracks. Yes, I, I can play the piano, I can play the guitar, I can play the bass, I can't play drums to save my life. I can, yeah. I can program them, can't play them to save my life. But I wouldn't say, like, if I had the choice and money was no option, I've got a list of 10 people I'd rather call to come in and do that job because I know that they're, that's their engineering, that's their production. Like, they are the master of that. And that's what they, yeah. th- that's what they're here to do, you know? I think that there, there's reasons why you have session players. There's re, everything, every cog in the machine is there for a reason. And I think it's really about respecting that. And, you know, yes, I play all this stuff. Yes, there's many songs that I work on that I do do a lot of the stuff on. But, you know, and I'm willing to. I'm, I never shy away from that. But at the same time, if it's like, hey, do we have money to hire this person? Because they can come in and do stuff that I would never even imagine and never be able to technically do because I don't have eight hours a day for three instruments to really perfect them to a point of being a master on them. And you know, I didn't spend my childhood, unfortunately, playing all of these instruments all the time. You know, I, I was trying to be a double bass player, so that's what I was spending the majority of my practice hours on. And yes, I'm, I can shred on a double bass, but uh-huh. <laughs> you know, I can get by on everything else. And I think that to me is, I, I'd rather be the best rhythm guitarist in the band than the lead guitarist, because there's just something about that to me that I just like that. It's the supportive role. Exactly. Yeah. I, I feel the same way as a bass player. I love I love being part of the support team and like not in the not in the limelight, but kind of like just holding it all together, you know? Exactly. That's a, I feel like that's like a bass player. That's the bass players. And that's I feel like a lot of bass players turn into producers because of that, because it's, it's a very similar, uh, you know, we're supporting the music almost, you know? Yeah. I mean? If the bass line's not right, it ain't grooving. It ain't grooving. I, I saw your I saw your Instagram post about the low the the what's it called the Labella Flats, and I was like, okay, man, he's a cool dude. Um, <laughs> that was my that's my that's my that's totally my jam these days. Uh, so, um, tell me about uh, do you have any practices to stay fresh and creative in the studio? Like, obviously, we go through like you know, sometimes we have better days, we have worse days. Like, how do you how do you stay uh, inspired? Well, one, I think it goes back to kind of what I said earlier in our discussion of like just enjoying my job in the sense of like, 
even on the worst days in some of the most miserable client situations and stuff like that. <laughs> it, I, I, I'm not like, yeah, I'll, I'll come out of the work day and be like, man, that was, that was hard to, to deal with. But at the end of the day, I'm still like, all right, let's go down. It's like Groundhog's Day. I'm ready to go back and do it again, <laughs> and like not re- That's the best and not ever. and you know not oh, remember God. and just again. Yeah. It, it, I I think it also goes back to the whole athlete thing. I know how to kind of separate and leave things on the field and walk away and you know compartmentalize that mental um, thing. Like when I'm out and I'm spending time with my wife and you know doing my husband stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We talk about that stuff, but I'm, I, I'm disengaged at that point from there. Like, yeah, I might be thinking about it, but then when I come down, it's kind of like a fresh start. Like this is a new game. This is a new day. You know, my mix might've been awful yesterday, but maybe today it won't be. And maybe today we'll turn the corner and we can get to where we need to be. And I think for me, it's always about fighting to never be worse than I was the day before. And it's, you know, I think that's always been my mentality growing up is really trying to better be better than I was yesterday. And yeah, you know, the older we get, that margin is like microscopic. I know. You it know? really is. You know? It's crazy. My, my son is like a year and a half and Every single day is like the opposite of microscopic. It's like leaps and bounds. Right. And it's just like, wow, it's so cool how quickly every day like he develops and he's like he's like a new person almost every day. And like we're just, you know, we're in that long plateau, I guess, for the rest of our lives. Exactly. You know? And at the end of the day, it's a marathon. It's it's not a sprint. You know, if we're if we all have uh the same goal in mind and we're all giving the same amount of energy, then that's what it really matters, you know? And I think that for me, staying fresh is really about finding those inspiring moments with each artist. You know, yes, obviously, when I'm listening to music outside of stuff, I'm like, oh, that that would kind of be a cool thing to throw in an arrangement and stuff like that. But, you know, I'm really focused on, you know, each artist's individual kind of journey. And since... I'm lucky enough to not at the moment kind of be pegged so much in one musical genre. I'm able to kind of flex that muscle a lot better. You know, I'm not stuck in kind of like only doing pop or only doing R and B or only doing rap. Like I feel like if I was in that game, I would have to really, really try and think of ways to step up my stuff. Not that I don't try and step up what I'm doing, but that if I'm tunneled into this thing, it's like, okay, how can we get out of this tunnel while staying in it? Yeah. And, you know, if I'm working on a pop tune tomorrow, but the next day I'm working on a soul thing, I'm starting to use each of these things to say, oh, like, yeah, we're going to just distort the ever living crap out of these drums that might work great in like a heavy indie rock kind of setting. What happens if we do it in a soul setting? And it's like, oh, like this is cool. Like we have to tone it back a little bit, but this is new. Like, does anyone do, you know, is anyone doing this? Yeah, there's a couple of people. All right, so let's find a way to make it unique. And I think that's, again, the kind of thing is like really trying to be akin to what the artist wants. And, I really do believe that that comes down to references and being able to really rein in an artist and proper yeah. and proper pre-production. Um, one of the things that I obviously yeah, let's talk about pre-production. Sure, man. let's do it. Get into get get into it. So one of the things that I absolutely the the one thing I always get nervous on is when I have to work on a project and there's no pre-production because yeah, go on because it I know that given certain artists that it will be the we'll be here for years. You know, it's, it's not like a, there's a clear vision, you know? And so for me, I've, I've always viewed pre-production as like, it obviously, it's the most important step um, in my mind because it's the preparation and it's really getting to understand where the artist is, where they want to go and really being able to 
work on the arrangements to best suit the artist. And for me, I really try and push artists to do pre-production and like to the point where like I'm, you know, I, I very rarely even charge for pre-production stuff because I know that when it gets to the recording process, it's going to be a lot less of headaches for me if we can deal with this stuff now and really dig into the songs rather than using time on the clock and other things when people are less enthusiastic about doing that. And so I I, I really want to dig in. It's like nutrition and and exercise instead of like treating like cholesterol or whatever. Exactly. You know, yeah, you can do a liposuction procedure and get all the fat (laughs) out, but if you can eliminate most of it by going on a run every morning, go on a run because... One, it's free, and two, it makes you feel good. <laughs> you know, yeah, and it's totally. a routine. So, I, yeah. great, great analogy, man. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, yeah, it's, go on. It's just so important, and I feel like if if I had one thing to say to any artist or engineer or producer is like, if you haven't been dedicating time to pre production, do it and do it now, and you'll see the rest of your production and everything else. One, take steps up. But also you'll see the the amount of time it takes to get from A to Z diminish usually. Yeah. And you'll get better results. For sure. So so how do you do pre production? Do you have like a method to it or is it or is it very It it varies because I'm you know, sometimes I just have an artist with and they have no band. And so they'll bring in a song and, you know, I'll have to write the chords to it, or they'll have the chords and we'll have to like kind of play through it and get everything going. Sometimes if it's a full band, they've been rehearsing and you know they have their parts and everything and I want to listen to all the parts. I want to hear the parts stripped down. I want to hear how parts work with other things. I want to hear if they have any concerns about the song that they're working on because that's the first question is like, are you guys happy with your arrangement? Great. All right, so now where do you need my help? And they'll usually be like, okay, well, we either don't know or mm-hmm. these are the these are the troubles that we're not we're not able to tell if we're on the right track, and then I can sort of, you know I can go in and start to focus in on things. Um, but even at that point, I'm trying to really think of the song as you know a piece of art. I'm sure we're all familiar with that beautiful uh, painting in the Art Institute of Chicago that's all done by. Dots. I can't remember the guy's name. It's horrible that I cannot. But, you know, the whole, the whole dotism of the fact that everything is done with these little dots everywhere. And then you step back and it's this painting of a park, you know? And then you come up close and it's just all these little finite little dots. And I think the trouble that we all get into is we focus either too much on the dots or too much on the picture. And you have to find that place in between where you're not weighing these guys down on details that don't matter and that don't serve the song and finding a way to make sure that at the end of the day, like if you want people to feel this emotion, okay, so let's work on getting to the point where when you're at this part of the song or done with the song, we've gone on the journey. You know, it's a, everything is a journey for the most part. So, where are we trying to start from and where are we trying to go? Have you successfully done that? And, you know, I really try and focus on that and, you know, obviously bring out stuff if, if people are playing sloppy, you know, making sure that charts are written um, for people that need them. Most people need them. And, <laughs> and, you know, really making sure that, you know, that by the time that people get into the studio, the charts are 100% right. Everything is there because, if all of that preparation is done, you can make drastic and minor changes so much easier. But if right. people don't know what's going on and they're showing up and they're just like, well, this is how we always play it. And you're like, okay, well, let's try something new and blah, 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 blah. You're going to be met with a lot more resistance. you know. And it's also going to be difficult because these guys have been literally practicing day in and day out for this said performance. And now you're telling them, all right, well, now we're going to flip it. And yes, if you're dealing with really, really great musicians, that flip is not hard. But for most people, it is. 
and that's okay. So it, I want to try and make sure everything is kind of so.